Welcome to your new podcast Optimum Ideation with the host in Bridges. Idea Interviews. The best of human ideation. Everyone has a superpower. But times are hot, many are in the darkness of their own mind, in need of a helping hand. Helping others to become whole. Our sponsoring brands. Third party people. NFT fashion. TGC fashion. Mark Point. Enjoy the show. Welcome, everybody, back to Optimization Podcast. We have an awesome guest today, a very classy lady, Miss Dame Clarissa Burt. And uh, we're just going to kind of go into questions here and let her tell you a little bit about herself and her journey and how we got to here. How we got to here? <laughs> how long you got, Tim? <laughs> this this will be your longest question, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, little Chrissy Burt was born back in Philadelphia in 1959. Do the math. And um, and uh, to very simple people, just blue collar, you know, row house uh, kind of situation. And But she had big dreams already from a very young age. I was lucky enough when I was five years old. And I even have Polaroids to prove that I was Mary Poppins in the kindergarten play. Oh, wow. <laughs> in, yeah. In 1965. Wow, and, uh, yeah. And when I, I got to tell you that when I when I first heard the first applause, you know, when I was five years old, I was like, you know, this isn't a bad gig. I've got a ticket <laughs> standing here, you know, getting applauded for singing supercalibragilisticexpialidocious. And so it was just a really, really um, I think it was really um, kind of, a, a, a you know, a catapult point for me to know that somehow, some way and some day, you know, that my life was going to be basically lived in front of a microphone or on a stage. <laughs> Yeah. And and that didn't happen for a very long time after Mary Poppins. I was <laughs> uh, for different reasons. You know, it just didn't pan out. They wanted me to be Mary, you know, uh, uh, in the Wizard of Oz. Anyway, I wasn't able to do it until I moved it, uh, to New York City. And then I moved to New York when I was, I oh got 19 or something. And I started to model and that went really well. And then I moved to Europe. So I was in Europe for about 30 years and I, you know, modeled and I had a, a phenomenal time and a really great modeling career. And that parlayed into acting. So some of you may remember here, see if I can get you a little closer, that poster yeah. right there. It's a never ending story part two poster. Oh. There you go. It's in it, it's in German, but that's the Neverending Story Part Two, and that's me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I was the mean queen that took all of his the kids. Uh, um, I'm going to turn us back around. Took all of the kids' memories, and and um, and then there was a tray you, and I think you know your generation of kids that watched that movie had said to me. Oh my God, Clarissa, that movie traumatized yeah. a generation. <laughs> you know? What do you mean? So, the, you know, in 1986, when the first one came out, and everybody remembers the song, Never Ending Story. Yeah. Da, 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 da. So it was a big deal, the song, and it was a big deal, the movie. And of course, Atreyu couldn't save the horse from the uh, quicksand pit. And I think every 12 year old kid just, you know, committed that to memory for life. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and so anyway, I was the mean queen in the second had the time of my life. So had lots of fun things going on in stage and in front of cameras until I decided at one point after the movies, I was, you know, on live television, living in Italy. Um, and that went on for many years. And then I opened up my own production company and started to produce television for Italy. And I had the time yeah. of my life. I mean, I really had a great time. But then at a certain point, it was time to come home. You know, we constantly talk about reinventing. You know, a lot of a lot of times entrepreneurs and solopreneurs are, you know, they're really worried and they, you know, risk is, it's a big deal. Like risk is, you know, when you're younger, it's like, ah, eh, what the heck, however it goes, goes. But, you know, as you get a little older and you're in your, you know, a little longer in the tooth, as they say, you really stop to think about, is this the right thing, right move for me? You ponder it more than you do when you're younger. Um, yeah. so I, you know, I knew that at, at a certain point, Italy, ha whereas I loved it very much, I even became an Italian citizen for God's sake. And I have not a drop of Italian blood in me, but I knew that it was time for me to move on and that I had to come back to the States. And that was another, and I was almost 50 at that point. So it was like a really huge reinvention point for me from being, you know, really well established, really well known. You know, it was like, 
you ju- you know you jump off the cliff into the dark without a net kind of thing yeah and that's what happened when i came here but i'm happy to tell you i'm here to tell the story that all is well <laughs> and yeah. you know as long as you are committed you're tenacious you are passionate you know we use the word passionate maybe even overuse it but let me tell you it is such a huge part of the game such a huge part of the game when you're an entrepreneur or a solopreneur and you have you know big visions and you have big plans um uh, that you, you know, you, everything really boils right back down to you. Yeah. And, you know, and that is, you know, you can, you can ask for all the help and counsel and advice in the world, but at the end of the day, it's you that really, you know, pulls the trigger on anything that's going to happen in your life. And so, yeah, that is, that is really, really an important part. One of the greatest things that happened to me, and I'll, I'll pan you back over the other way. Okay. See that right there. Yeah. I was knighted last year. Yeah. And that was when you called me Dame. That's why people go, what do you mean? She's Dame. She said, oh, that's a horrible word. Don't be calling her that. And it's not. It's a lovely, it was a lovely honor that was bestowed upon me last year um, by the um, Sovereign and Royal Order of Cappadocia, Constantine the Great, and St. Helen. What yeah. I did not know is that St. Helen was Constantine the Great's mother and that this royal order exists from Byzantine times. So I was really very honored to be to be nominated and to be knighted was a very big thing yeah. uh, for me last year and the book, you know, talk about the book. People keep saying, yeah. God, so you, talk, you write about self-esteem, you that have had such an amazing life and you, let me give you a little pan up you that will, yeah. you know, had a phenomenal modeling career and you are known all over the world and all of that. Is it really you? How could you ever know anything about having difficulty? <laughs> well, listen, Self-esteem doesn't discriminate, right? It yeah. kind of like is straight across the board. And one of the reasons when I first, you'll see that this book at the, it's three triangles and there are three different colors of blue, right? Mm-hmm. When I first got the book back, the first, the triangles were pink, yellow, and orange. So it was really a feminine colors. It was great for women. And I asked only one change and that change be that, you know, from the publisher in New York City, I said, would you please just make the cover blue? I felt as that was a more serene color. And I also wanted men to be able to pick up the book. And I'm really happy to say that many have, and many yeah. have garnered some really great uh, information um, uh, and guidance, if you will, from the book. You know, um, The book is broken down into 12 different chapters. Each chapter begins with a reword. I called it a regime because a regime is an organized way of doing things, right? And each chapter in the book is, has, is like a mini organization piece. So we start with, release right what is it that's not working what's not serving you what do you got to get rid of what did they teach you that definitely is you know like all of that and you definitely start working on you know what's not what's not working uh in your life you go to like the ground zero point and from ground zero the second chapter is rebuild and then responsibility i could be here all day talking about my baby but the really cool part of it um, Tim is that it is now a Plurie award winning international best selling book. Yeah. And it's still after a year and a half in Barnes and Noble, which is really a huge crowning moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, any author, that's a, that's a great, you know, that's a great uh, uh, goal. First of all, to just complete a book and then to have it just be on the shelf for an extended period of time. Yeah. That's well, awesome. I do have to give a shout out to Gary Krebs who helped me write the book because I'm just too bouncing off the walls to be able to sit long enough to write my, you know, to sign up, to put a signature on a document. So <laughs> um, he and I got together, you know, quite a bit and I brought him exactly everything I wanted. The, I wanted the, the title of the book, the subtitle of I want everything that he wanted. And he just put it in words beautifully for me. So um, I'm really thrilled to say that the book is doing extraordinarily well. And I think also it's a testament to a little bit of testament to the times, um, yeah. these times that are so economically, politically, and socially uh, at unrest. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are destabilized right now. People are just right. hanging on, kind of like hanging on by a thread, and we can see what's happening, yeah. <laughs> especially with our younger uh, crowd and our yeah. younger kids. And CDC is coming out with some really alarming numbers. Yeah. Um, for kids that are, you know, remember these are kids that went through, you know, they, they've been on devices all their lives. Then they right. went through a pandemic. So they had real, you know, diminished social lives for three years. Then it was, you know, coming out of that and, you know, they couldn't go to their proms and they couldn't like all the fun stuff they missed out on. And, um, and they're, they're, they're very disabled. We're all destabilized, but the kids, especially, we have to keep our ear to the ground for the kids, and yeah. for me, kids means, you know, and the CDC, when they came out, they were ta- what they were talking about, um, you know, high school, middle school, high school, 
and college age kids yeah. that are depressed or anxious yeah. or, you know, they have ideations of suicide or they're committing suicide. And so the yeah. numbers are off the charts and it's a super alarming time for uh for us as adults to be sure that we're doing the personal development work you yeah. know you can put a lot of time into your you know into your work into your business but you know th th you should be putting the same amount of time into your you know personal development and the people around you as well because the bigger better and bolder and brighter you come to the table the bigger, bolder, better, and brighter the people at the table are going to be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whatever you're, you know, people always remember how you made them feel. Right. And, you know, they don't give a crap about who you are and all your accomplishments. They want to know how did they make that person make me feel. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, being a big cheerleader, you know, being a cheerleader for the collective is, is yeah. what I would like to think I'm doing right now. But by the way, you can walk down Barnes and Noble's eye. When I was a kid, there were no computers and internet, but there was the self-help section in all the bookstores. Yeah. Well, the bookstores went away except for Barnes and Noble. But if you walk down the aisles now, it's not self-help anymore. It's called personal development. And yeah. it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar, I'm talking like $20 billion industry. And that right there leads you to believe that there's a lot of work to be done yeah. because people are constantly, you know, the same question that Adam had in the Garden of Eden, I think is the same question we all still have. And that is, you know, like, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Where am I going? How do I get there? You know, why is life so tough? You know, like, yeah. you know, and, and we, we are, we're all looking for ways. I would like to think a lot of us are looking for ways to better ourselves. My mission is to be a better person tomorrow than I am today. Yeah. Do I, do I hit the mark every time? I don't know, but I do really try, you know, I yeah. really, really try. Yeah. That's uh that's a lot about what the show is about is, you know, just grabbing the great minds that, that have the emotional intelligence and yeah. are building programs to help others. Yes. And promoting right. you. Yes. You know, Absolutely. And, you know, you talk about emotional intelligence. There you go. I mean, that's like 90% of almost every relationship you'll ever have. Yeah. First is the relationship with self, yeah. you know, um, because that's really the most important relationship. If you're, you know, like great person to be around, you're attracting really great, usually pretty great energy around you. Um, and then the emotional intelligence is to know what triggers us. You know, yeah. what is it that's going to set me off? And how can I change? How can I change the dynamic around how I react? today, as opposed to how I reacted last week, a year ago, five years ago, and 10 years ago, I know that I have changed immensely in, yeah. in, in the way I act and react to yeah. life's triggers. You know, um, I use the analogy of, you know, the hurricanes and the storms and the tempests and the, you know, the tornadoes that are going to come through. It's just, it's inevitable. There is something that's going to happen. It's right around the corner and it's going to trigger you. And it could be a little trigger, it could be a big trigger, but here comes the storm. So what are you going to do? You're going to hunker down, batten down the hatches in the basement and let it, you know, like, and, and that's a smart thing to do. And if, you know, if you, if you think that, you know, if you have the proper tools in the shed and you are standing strong in your stead, as would a, you know, a, a, a well eradicated tree, you probably lose a branch or two, a couple of leaves, you know, and the storm goes by and you're not going to be uprooted and, and transported away with the storm. Yeah. If you have now the proper tools. So be real, real careful and very mindful now. And really, you have to put work into it because we're we're used to being who we're used to being. Yeah. But how's that really working for you? You know, right. you're like, how, isn't there something about yourself you'd rather change? You know, something you'd like to transform a little bit, you know, yeah. so. I often say, get those tools in the shed that you need in at any given moment. And books like mine are those. I'm not saying buy mine. I'm saying, you know, yeah. make sure that you are constantly doing the work that needs to be taken. You know, yeah. um, remember when you go to church on Sunday, whatever you were, you know, we, we were shown to you that day, right? <laughs> make yeah. sure you're, you know, doing it all week long. And, you know, remember, don't just walk out of church, go, you know, have breakfast and forget about, you know, like, remember, like, make it a mindful mission. Yeah. Very good analogy there. Um, so people get to where they want to go in life uh, because they know where they want to go. Where do you ultimately want to go? Wow. Well, to heaven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, like to say, I like to think that somebody's waiting for me at the pearly gates and I've got it, you know, <laughs> and I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the, uh, you know, the guest list. 
Um, but, um, you know, I would really like to be able to just take this, you know, this, this whole book uh, and make it a global effort. I'm really proud to say that the book at least, not only is it on, you know, in Barnes and Noble, but it's on Kindle and Audible as well on Amazon. And it's in Amazon in every country in the world. So, you know, yeah. That's really, really cool. And then we dropped it in Italy in Italian uh, on, in November of last year. So, you know, to make sure that this, this you know, message gets, you know, uh, goes, you know, broad and wide, wide yeah. and deep. And, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, pick up a good on stages. I want to start talking to the universities. I want to start talking to colleges. I want to start talking to kids. I want to start talking to even to the elderly. You know, people think that this is a, a woman's issue or it's a kid's issue. It's a man's issue. It's the yeah. elderly's issue. You know, you have to think about people that are empty nesting and separating and divorcing or you know now they're if they find themselves alone oh no who am i now that my kids are well you know that i'm an you know, there are all you know all kinds of case scenarios of, that i've spoken to and about when it comes to self-esteem self-esteem isn't just oh don't ever compare yourself to anyone else it's so deeper than that yeah. you know it's a value system who who are you when nobody else is in the room right who are you and you know i like to talk about taking the high road and the high road is honor integrity gratitude and honor oh, sorry and honesty yeah. you know that's important to me so i'm radically honest probably to a fault you know you may not always want to hear what i have to say but you know that if you're coming to me you're going to get the honest truth no. i don't lie not my thing don't like people that do not in my wheelhouse just i'm not going to do it integrity huge word he integrity, I think, is probably as important as honesty. You know, gratitude every day. I think I thank God for the warm blankets, the roof over my head, the pantry yeah. full of food. You know, the freedom not have to get in a car and go over wherever I want. Um, friends, family, health. You know, my eyes that see. It sounds silly, but it's true. Yeah. When you start to think about, and then you can if you can think, come up with ten things. Wow, you're great. Go for ten more. Give me 10 more things, you know, drop and give me another 10, right? <laughs> like, you know, like keep going yeah. because then when you realize what, it, what, what, what difficulty truly is, right. you know, it's probably not you. And if it is, then, you know, then I'll pray for you too. You know what I mean? If you're really going through some, some tough and difficult times, yeah. you know, again, these are times that people are worrying. Everybody's very worried, Tim, and you know it because I know I'm worried too, but let me remind you that worrying is praying for what you do not want. Yeah. Yeah. And the more you worry and you put that energy out to the universe, the more negativity is going to come back. Exactly. So and as hard as it is, because I know the work that has to be done, it's yeah. tough to do. I say, stay mindful. Yeah. Negative thought. Sorry, you got to go. No time for you today. I'm going to switch that around. I call them my daily demons. You know, the yeah. daily demons. Yeah, they come in and they're yapping in your ear. Sorry, no time for you. To Not today. Yeah. Not on my watch. You know, I think yeah. they say not today, Satan, you yeah. know, whatever it is, not going to work. It's just not going to work. So, you know, self-esteem is something that, you know, you have to, again, you, more than anything, you have to have courage because also, Tim, when you start to do this work, you're going to realize that there are some people in your life that are probably toxic, that are not serving your higher good, your greater good, and you'll probably start to put some distance between you and them. And it's going to offend some people and some people are going to get their noses out of joint. And, you know, you've got to be able with boundaries also to be able to say, hey, listen, you know, and you and boundaries, a lot of people think that boundaries means you got to get angry and you got to raise your voice and you got to set the record straight. And it's none of that. You say, hey, listen, what you just said, what you just did, um, kind of, landed wrong can i explain to you why can we not do that again if somebody says to you oh my god i am so sorry i never ever meant it in that way of course i will be more inclined well then you know you're not in a toxic relationship but yeah. if somebody comes back and goes ah oh, come on knock it off you what are you nuts you're crazy you know I, I was just joking for god's sake what the hell you know you probably want to take a double triple check at that you know yeah. you want to keep that one in check a minute but, you know, again, getting back to the courageous part, the real, how badly do you want to see change? How badly do you want to see that change in your life? You are going to, it's going to hurt you too. Some of these things are going to be very uncomfortable, but you know that you must forge forward because it is for your greater good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to protect yourself because if you don't, then who will? <laughs> 
Yeah. And uh, and there's plenty of toxic people out there. And, and a lot of it's, I, I like to think that a lot of it's not their fault, but more of an environmental thing. Yeah. Uh, maybe they were raised in a certain manner that made them in, in the way that they are. More so than any kind of gene, you know, like a pass down of gene. I think it's more of an environmental type yeah. thing. And the other thing I think we deal with, especially, you know, with entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, we deal with the imposter syndrome, right? A lot of people have difficulty with that. It's another self-esteem kind of um, yeah. thing to go, oh, you know, I'll pick it until you make it. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Absolutely. But you can't pick it forever either, you know? Yeah. And so when you're going into any case scenario where you're feeling like you're kind of a fake, you know, I I'm going to say, get really good, get really good, sorry, real good, get real passionate, get real real about who you are, get real real about what you want to bring to the table, what your value is, know your value. So yeah. many entrepreneurs and solopreneurs are underestimating themselves, undervaluing themselves because they're afraid that, you know, they're going to lose some clients or their pricing may be too high or, you know, that they are, they're not as good as, you know, as the next guy. It, you know, it's not true. Um, and I would, you know, continue to say the most important thing I think that I do for myself is continual education. Yeah. Tim, the last 20 years, 30, well, first of all, I think the internet turned 30 yesterday, but the last 20 years, especially after like internet 1.0, you know, <laughs> the last yeah. 20 years, especially for me, the last 10 have been a whirlwind of learning curves and learning new software and know what's coming out and keeping yeah. up now it's you know now it's ai right that's the whole yeah. new thing now right uh, which is another you know uh that could be a whole nother show and that's kind of a scary prospect but that's not what we're here to talk about um you know it's constant education constantly taking courses and classes and networking and getting out there and meeting new people and thinking a little bit outside as i say outside the box but you know thinking a little bit outside of your comfort zone Exactly. You know, where do you really want to be? I know that I would love to have, um, you know, one of these days. Uh, and, and when I say this, I'm not talking about this administration, but I would love to be able to give a speech at the White House one day. You know, I would be able, yeah. <laughs> I, I would love to be able to, you know, get back to Harvard and give another speech there and talk about my book because I didn't have my book the first time. I'd love to be able to give a speech at the United Nations. I'd love, so my, I want to up my game when it comes to the empowerment of all of us. Yeah. You know, you're either, you're, and, and, and to make us all, you know, really mean self-esteem machines. You know, I want every one of us to be living as an esteemed being that's really ultimately where I want to go. Yeah, that's great. That's right in line with our show here. <laughs> um, so what layers did you have to reveal to become who you are now? Layers did I have to reveal? Gosh, I had to, um, I had to come to terms years ago that I wasn't like everybody else. I wasn't the clicky girl. I wasn't the girl that hung around in groups and clicks and popular people. And, you know, I was always a little bit a loner. I was never lonely, but I was a loner and there's a difference. And that was, you know, I needed my independence. Like if, if I, with all due respect, had been born in a culture where they move in groups, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I would have, you know, I just would have gone nuts. I have to have my freedom and I have to have my independence and I have to have, you know, my, my, my mobility to go and do whatever I want. If you say, hey, listen, you know, we're going to be in my Los Cabos tomorrow at noon. Great. Um, you know, let me go. <laughs> I'll meet you down there kind of thing. I don't have. I was never married. I don't have children. I don't have pets. And I have, you know, cactus plants. So that I make sure that I, I can get up and go whatever I, you know, I can. I love that part of my life. And I knew early on that if, you know, I, I'm, I'm very social. Um, if I'm in a social context, oh my God, I'll know everybody in that room by the time I leave. And not only are probably connecting them between themselves because right. I want them to know one another. But when I leave, I leave alone. I go home alone. I do my, you know, I love that aspect of, um, of me and my life. But I knew early on that sometimes it was going to feel like Hmm, you know, I'm not a part of everything and I'm not invited to that party. And all oh, those girls, you know, they may not like me and, and it was okay. They yeah. didn't have to like me. What I really had to understand was to peel away all of, of what I thought uh, making me happy was going to be. You know, yeah. as a kid, I thought being a part of it, being accepted and being, you know, that was going to, you know, float my boat. 
but I realized that I was, I was really, you know, I was already at the helm of my own boat. I didn't need to be floating it. I was driving right. the damn thing. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I was navigating the boat. Yeah. I was kind of the same way, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, we all have more layers to us. What is your next layer to remove? Next layer to remove would be, you know, I think with any kind of business venture, there's always a little bit of, mm, if I build it, will they come? Yeah. You know, I know my value and I know I think I'm good at what I do. Um, but I want to build something now, which are retreats for women that, you know, would be based on, you know, the book and the four pillars of self-esteem, which are look good, feel good, be good and yeah. greater good. If I build this, will they come? You know, there's yeah. always a little bit of, mm, you know, but what if they don't like me? And what if they don't like, you know, that you are invariably, invariably, no matter how much, um, you know, you, I can write about self-esteem and talk to, you know, teach about self-esteem and, and pass, you know, the, give a good word on about self-esteem. There's yeah. always a moment where you go, hmm, I wonder, <laughs> you know, so that's another layer that I have to really, you know, conquer and say, look, I'm 90% there, but there's always that 10%. Remember those daily demons? I tell you, yeah, get the hell out of here today. And sure. you know, like that's, I still deal with a little bit of that every once in a while. So that's a layer that keeps me, keeps me real. I think it keeps me grounded keeps my ear to the ground as well. And, and so I, I think it opens me up also to be continually um, um, wanting to know how I can better myself, better the retreat, make it, you know, the best possible retreat in the world for, you know, for those that'll be attending. So yeah, like being open to suggestions and, and, um, you know, and some constructive criticism, like, you know, keeping it, keeping it real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe attend a couple, you know, this year yeah. uh, of different ones and see yeah. if there's people yeah. that you've clicked with and see if they'd be interested in yours. Yeah. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, or test the market. Just say, hey, test we'll the market. Put, put a poll out there. <laughs> hey, if I do this, are you going to go or what? <laughs> Got it. Uh, let's discuss some of your challenging trials and tribulations. And you may have already mentioned a few of them. But, uh, challenging trials and tribulations of my lifetime. Um, challenges, challenges would have been, um, you know, like in the in the limelight media, for example. You were talking about my, you know, and my the book I've written, but I also, um, you know, I I, I uh, started a company called In the Limelight Media. I had to learn all the new, you know, situ like I had to learn StreamYard, you know, for four or five yeah. years, four years ago, I think I started five years ago, whatever it was, I was like one of the first early adopters there. Uh, learn how to do StreamYard, learn how to do the podcast, learn how to all the platforms, learn how to get some, you know, uh, in, not in, yeah, in kind sponsors or some really great strategic, strategic uh, alliances, um, you know, put it out there uh, so that I could get it onto a network. And now we're on Roku, Amazon, Fire, Apple TV. <laughs> and, right. you know, and then the magazine. I mean, we've had some really cool people on the magazine. For example, if you know Downton, you know, if you know the show Downton Abbey, right? So we had on the cover of our magazine the woman that owns that castle. I don't yeah. know if you know if Joe Vitale. Joe Vitale was on, it was in the secret. He was on the cover. We've got Giuseppe Versace, who was on the cover as well. And she is Johnny Versace, who's a big Italian designer. Uh, she is uh, the cousin. So we've had the Lamborghinis on the cover. I had Pagani on the cover. So, you know, the that was all about learning, like learn a magazine. Now all of a sudden I'm publishing magazines. So there was a lot in the last couple of years of challenges and some, some tribulations, yeah. I will guarantee you, of the learning curves and only having, you know, I was honest to God, I was working 15, 16 days for two years just to pull it all together because a multimedia platform with one person, yeah. I say we, but when I say we, Tim, I mean me, myself, and I. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Right? So it was, and I had some interns along the way helping, don't get me wrong, but you know, you have to, they're, they're part-time job also really. Um, and they definitely brought, helped me as well. Don't get me wrong, but you, those were some of the trials and tribulations to say, okay, I've just turned 60. What am I going to do, uh, you know, with the rest of my life? Oh, I always wanted to do a multi -media. Oh, that sounds good. Right before COVID. Why don't we do, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. start and, 
And so there you go. So I've got the business, I've got the book, and now I'm going to be starting the retreats because, you know, I turned 64 last week and I'm, I am I think I'm only getting started. And that's a God's honest truth. You know, I have as much energy now as I did when I was a kid. So I thank God for that. I think, you know, I've got wonderful health, uh, a, a still a boundless energy. And, uh, and I'm thrilled that I don't take, you know, a, a medication to save my life. And I'm really, th I'm, I'm so super blessed in that sense. Right. So yeah, absolutely. So, you yeah. know, as I said, 64, just getting started. Yeah, no, that's good. That's so good. <laughs> um, when you first started on this journey in your career, what's something that's been more trying than you had expected? When I first, start, um, when I first started on the journey in, well, I had had quite, you know, the fourth chapter of my book is reinvent. So I've had quite a few. I was a babysitter and I was a waitress and I was a secretary and then I was a model and then I was an actress and then I was a producer and I, you know, so and a director. There's been lots of stuff, you know, and now I'm an author. Yeah. Um, so let's read this again. The uh, first start of the journey, the career of something you try. I think one of the, the, in the beginning of my career, at least the most trying thing was being away from family as much as I was. I mean, I was living on the other side of the world. It was yeah. great. I mean, I was super blessed for that too. But everyone, again, these are times that was is pre, you know, computer, pre cell phone, pre internet. You know, if right. you wanted to write home, you know, you could write an air, air mail home, but it would take two weeks to get there. Yeah. You know, by the time they wrote you back, a month passed. Yeah. So, you know, so it was a lot of, it was, a, it was, it could, it, look, it was all good. Don't get me wrong. But there were times where it was a really lonely place. Yeah. And I happened to be a real homebody. And I was, you know, the, in the beginning, I remember being quite homesick, um, you know, a, a lot of the time. So then you grow out of that and you realize that it's all good. You know, you take, you take you wherever you go. Right. And so that is the most important thing. You know, there's a really funny skit that Adam Sandler does. I don't know if you've ever seen it. He does a spoof on like Perillo Tours. And he's, and he's going, listen, if you're in New York and he's holding this brochure up, like he's holding this brochure and he's gone, you know, whatever tour, not Perillo tours, let me get, you know, Manicotti tours. Now, let me just say, he goes, he goes, you know, if you are depressed in New York. I guarantee you when you get on the plane and you land in Italy, you're still going to be depressed in Italy. <laughs> yeah. you know? So, you know, it was like, well, you take wherever you go, you are right. Yeah. So it, was fun. it was, it's a funny spoof. You should look it up. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you take you wherever you go. Uh, good. Yeah, day. no, I understand. Uh, my first job after college was working on a pipeline and I'd be in this yeah. state, in that state, right, and, you know, right. extended periods of time yeah. in these little towns where yep. you don't know anybody, you yeah. know. And, yeah, with the end of the day, you have your work buddies, I guess, you know, sit around a bar and have a couple of beers or something. But, but you already uh, worked with them all day and you're like. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But, but it is what it is and they are who they are and you had what you had and you, I yeah. hope you made the best of that. But that's oh, what I'm did. saying. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have to, um, you know, there you go, right? There you are and there you go and okay. You know, you make the best of it wherever you are, but there is really true. Truly, there's no place like home. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I've heard that before. Did somebody say that before me? Yeah, <laughs> don't quote me on it. <laughs> um, when did you become passionate about your focus? I guess you said when you were young. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, but I'm like a super ADHD kind of. You know, I put a couple of other letters in there. I'm kind of like bright, shiny out objects and squirrel. <laughs> you know, I'm totally <laughs> um uh my focus comes and goes it really does ebb and flow like i will get focused and i will 15 16 hours at that computer and i won't move um and then there then uh, and i could do that for a while but then there's a time where i go i need a break because i yeah. am so hyper focused when i get focused yeah. it's not like a little focus every day I will hyper focus for a, a certain amount of time and then I'll back off for a little bit. You know, um, I'm good for at least eight to nine hours a day on the at least eight to nine. Uh, when I'm when I'm ha I'm like doing a mini vacation, you know, that's my day when it's mini vacation. People say, what do you do for fun? I go to Goodwill. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I love thrifting. Um, but um, that's really my easy day. It's like a mini vacation when I can say I'm only at the computer eight, nine hours a day. My real day is probably, I give myself, and in the beginning I was doing 15, 16 hours, you know, when I started up in the limelight. And then I did that for like three years and then I went, okay, here's what we're going to do now. We got to come back to reality. 12, hour, 12 hours on, yeah. 12 hours off. Yeah. And then yeah. I discovered TikTok and that was the end of that. 
<laughs> yeah, I still haven't really got into that one, but oh, I have! It's people. such a blast. Yeah, she's she's got us a, a couple uh, profiles on there. I Feel saw it. Good. I followed her. I told you I followed her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you like her fashion then, huh? I love it. It's great. Yeah, yeah it's, she's doing a great job. Yeah, it's alter your closet's DNA. Yep. <laughs> and, um. Who were the greatest contributors to your character? Grandma, my grandmother, sure. my maternal grandmother and I were best friends, really, truly best friends. You know, I say that because that was a loving and really caring relationship. But if I had to be honest, I think it was really the ones that contributed the most are probably my, my parents. My dad was not a good guy. So that will form you in one way. And my mother was the one that, you know, brought us up under really dire circumstances. So, you know, she showed me what real true strength is and then, um, and what resolve is and what pride is and what living good, clean life is. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, it was, you know, kind of just the things you need to be a little bit more mindful, but be aware of, let me just say things you need to be aware of, be aware of yeah. and be aware of. Um, so I think I would say my grandmother, because she was just, you know, the love of my life and, um, and, um, yeah, here, I'm going to show you something else. This is my mother and me when I was five and that was mom. Yeah. Wow. So mom was, um, just 24 in that picture, believe it or not, 23 maybe. But yeah, I mean, just to give you an idea, I show this picture a lot because when I talk about self-esteem, I talk to my, about my mother not wanting yeah. ever to have her picture taken because she didn't think she looked good in pictures. Wow. And of course I went on to be a model, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's one of those kind of cases when I was telling you about the, 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 the familiar, tr familiar tribe. If I had listened to my mom when she was going, Oh, please, oh, don't, don't take a picture of me. I could never. Well, yeah. you know, then I wouldn't have all that, right? <laughs> you right. know, yeah. so, you know, you, so that was kind of, I think me just saying, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, t you know, do what serves me. I'm going to do what I think. And I'm not afraid of a camera. I'm not afraid of a microphone. I'm not afraid of stage and I love it. And I'm going to go do what I really love. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, this was kind of my last layer was getting behind this camera because honestly, I built our businesses up, you know, six and seven figure businesses without doing this. Yeah. And so, and then I realized, wow, this is like something that you got to do this now. Yeah. There's no getting around it now that all yeah. this stuff has happened. These I have a couple shows. of my, a couple of my show hosts. I've, you know, I put out some shows last year and I found show hosts to be able to host them. And, you know, I spoke to one of the girls today and I spoke to a couple of them along the way. And they're like, Clarissa, you send us the coolest people. Like we want to continue to do this because you are just sending us the cool, like we would have never met these people. You know, these are the cool, I'm loving doing yeah. these podcasts because I like having the greatest conversations with the coolest people. And yeah. that is what having a podcast will, will do for you. I mean, everybody yeah. wants to talk about themselves. Everybody has something to promote. And, and by doing that, you know, you get to really talk to some, some extraordinarily cool people. And so, yeah, yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, well, I had interviewed, you know, probably close to 2000 people over this crazy time period since we started right before COVID too. And so I've been interviewing people and helping hundreds of people in their career, right. you know, getting jobs and, and all this. And, right. and I'm like, man, if I got to interview these people, I might as well interview the people I want to interview, right. Exactly. And, you know, and and share that with, you know, right. share these interviews with people. Cause man, they're so meaningful and uh, you they are. Kind of cherish. So true. All these, yeah. All these little conversations that we yep. have. Love and, it. Yeah. You just remember, too, remember too. them forever. You know, I love it too. Yeah. Um, so what is your best piece of advice for an audience that truly wants to better themselves or others in this lifetime? And the best piece of advice kind of could be here all day with that, but here's one that I love to leave people with. And that is, um, loyalty is when you have my back behind my back. And I think that that's another huge self-esteem piece because if you're at the water cooler and somebody's trashing Susie Q yeah. and you walk up, I mean, do you become a part of the tribal foment? Yeah. Uh, that that yeah. And that's Susie Q. Or do you, or do you walk up in front of everybody and say, wait a minute, everybody, you know, I know Susie Q and, I don't know her like that. You know, like maybe she's just having a bad day. You know, maybe she just yeah. needs to be understood. Maybe she needs a hug yeah. and then walk away. You know, now I know I feel really good about myself if I were to do that. I'm not 
I'm just kind of calling them softly out. I'm not trashing them and I'm not trashing Susie Q. I'm just yeah. throwing a different perspective at things. I think that we are all so quick to judge about so many things as opposed to just trying to be, you know, a, a kinder person. You know, people are going through some major crap, right? You know, what well, they do all the time, but I'm especially right now. Right. And I think we need to be really do need to be kinder. Um, you know, when I was growing up and I think you too, Tim, we were taught things that were called manners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a concept, right? And so remember to say thank you. Remember to say please. Remember to let somebody know how important they are to you. Always. Yeah. You know, if you said it once, okay, would you want an award? You know, keep telling people how important they are. They, 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 they thrive on it. They live for it, you know, to know people live to know how much they're liked and how much they're loved, you know? And so do that. Be kinder. Let the damn guy in. It's cutting it. Let him in. Yeah. You know, just to keep hold the elevator door open for somebody that's struggling to run to get to it. Just do the right thing. You know, yeah. help a, a woman down the stairs with the baby carriage, um, a stroller, uh, stand up for a pregnant woman in the elderly in public transport. It doesn't cost you a damned thing to do the right thing. Yeah. You know, so just do it. It's yeah. not that hard. You know, we're the ones that complicate everything, Tim. We are the ones that are constantly complicating things. Just make it simple. Yeah. Just do the right thing. That would be something I would say I would leave everybody with. You know, what is not what's the right thing for your ego? Not what's the right thing for the emotions you're feeling? Not what's the right thing because somebody pissed you off and you want to get back at them? Not what's, what's the right thing to do? Right. And a lot of times it's turning the other cheek keeping your mouth shut and walking away with your honor and your dignity. Yeah. Yeah. You, that's a very good one. No one's thrown that one out there. I appreciate that. Sure. <clears throat> now what, uh, what practices or techniques throughout your day makes your day a success? Um, I make sure that I, you know, go to bed early. I get up early. I do make sure that I eat properly. I make sure that I have all my supplements, everything that I know I need, take them on a daily basis. Um, I love my plants. You know, I just love it when the plants start blooming and, oh God, I just love all that stuff. Um, and so those are the fun little things that, you know, just, that it, it reminds you that you're human and that you love human things. The last, one of the last things, I know this is going to sound real stupid. I started to sprout things. So you get the little like speed you put them in water and yeah and, and watch them in a week you have sprouts oh my god that was the greatest thing since sliced bread yeah. <laughs> it's so fun yeah. having watching this stuff grow the miracle of nature yeah get outside breathe the fresh air hopefully you can find some um you know yeah. uh, gardening watching things grow tending to your you know your land tending to your children you know hugs kisses um you know uh, with the people that you love um these are the things that really make my day a success taking care of people that are in need you know helping helping at, smiling waving. You know, I go out in the morning if I'm, I haven't done it in a little bit. I need to get back up. I'm out there in the morning. I'm out there five, six in the morning. I'm waving at people. Yeah. There are a lot of people out here in the desert. They get out that early because it gets hot <laughs> real soon, but you know, I'm in Phoenix. So, you know, just it, a lot of people just, you know, they're trug on and you know, you're only two people on the street and they never even bother to say hello. Well, yeah. You know, say hello to people, wave to people, be kind to people. I understand people are really, you know, they're more leery than they used to be. Right. But I don't know. I just still believe in, I believe in, I believe in that man intrinsically is good and women intr oh, intrinsically are good and that we are, um, you know, we are all we got. Yeah. We are all we've got. So we yeah. have to make, we have to be the best that we can possibly be. Yeah. And if you think with that, that already to me is success mindset, right? right? Then everything else should fall into place. You know, you're in a good place. You're in a good, you're, you know, you're kind of in your happy place and you come back and you attack your day. And again, you know, my success is really more about um, the growth that I've seen in myself since I've adopted a lot of these, uh, the principles that I've talked about today. Um, again, I'm human. I do fall short sometimes, but if I do, I catch myself more quickly. Yeah. I rectify it quickly if I need to apologize and rarely do I, but if I need to, I'm never above an apology. Right. Uh, and none of us should ever be above an apology. You know, if you need to say, I'm sorry, they are two of the most powerful words you will ever say. And right. there's no blame. There's no shame. And there is no guilt in apology. Yeah. 
I agree. And man, I've been through some things, but yeah, you're, you're hitting some points there for sure. Um, so if you could interview three people, who would it be? You know, that's a great question. I would have loved to have interviewed Gandhi. I would love to have interviewed Nelson Mandela. I would love to have spoken to Mother Teresa. Um, I, I did have two pride audiences with Pope John Paul, and he's right there. Yeah. Uh, the second, but <clears throat> he was rather old, and that was not a situation. I mean, it was a situation where you had a private audience with him, but it wasn't, you know, you weren't really like, hey, so how's things up there in the, you know, yeah. uh, in heavenland? You know, you didn't do that. It was a private audience. Um, I would love to be able to interview, uh, I probably would interview Oprah quickly, funnily enough. I mean, I would really like to, um, you know, like figure out like what really is going on with, yeah. you know, her, her, um, her path as well. And, uh, you know, good, powerful, strong women, I think are, are always, uh, people to be emulated. So yeah, yeah probably, you know, but the, the leaders that made a difference, you know, the leaders in our lifetime that were really were leading, um, the flock, yeah. And, 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 and being a really great um, mentor for many, yeah. the mentor to many. Yeah. I just, I felt like, you know, you, you and me probably agree that there wasn't like a place where we, where we could go to get this emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, a yeah. few TV shows, but I mean, really were they that honorable, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, but but the internet's helped. You know, we can yeah. have more access to leadership. And yeah, that's yeah, those are the people. The people that were true, you know, true. They were leaders for the pop for the populace. Yeah. They were. I'm not talking about politicians. I would yeah. never. I couldn't care less. But I do like the idea of people that you know, that really were f true, true, <laughs> true leaders. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm Mandela. I don't know how he did it. You know, yeah. Yeah. so anyway. Um, so we're kind of wrapping up here. Uh, do you have a networking event, a book, product, invention, service that the audience can help promote? Well, I would love it if you'd all take a look at the self-esteem regime. The book is in Barnes and Noble. You can find it on Amazon. Again, you can find it on uh, Audible and Kindle. And, uh, and it's a great book for those that, you know, want to be able to get their, you know, roll up the sleeves and get your hands a little dirty in the sense that each chapter is going to ask of you, uh, some work and some homework. Uh, you're going to have, you know, the clarion call Clarissa's corner. You're going to have a case study. You're going to have affirmations. You're going to, um, have, uh, reviews and homework. So, you know, this is the kind of book that you will pick up more than once in a lifetime, because as you go through the exercises, you're going to be going through the exercises for where you are today. But as you grow, we all know we're not the same person a year from now that we, that's, uh, that we are today, right? We're going to be different. There's going to be something in our lives that's going to help us, you know, morph, change, um, you know, whatever, you know, we're going to be hopefully that much smarter in a year, right? Yeah. So you'll pick it up again in a year and read it again, much like you would like uh, Napoleon Hill's uh, Think and Grow Rich, right? You can read it today and it's going to have a certain amount of information for you today and you're going to pick up on it. And if you pick it up at six months time, you're going to, you know what? I don't remember reading that passage. I don't remember ever seeing this because you weren't ready. You know, you weren't ready for that message yet, right? So you're going to get the messaging you need now from reading it now. So that's, right. that's what I would, um, that's what I am promoting and I'm promoting it, you know, from the rooftops and I'm screaming it loud and clear that every one of us, it's, it's our duty to be working on our personal development, not only for ourselves, you know, mostly, but for all of those that are around us and for every, every move that we will make from here, uh, until the day, you know, the good Lord calls us back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what's the best way for the audience to uh, support your mission, get in contact with you? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm on social everywhere. So Clarissa Burt, pretty much everywhere. You can find me except on Snapchat. <laughs> so um, you can find me everywhere that you need to find me. Just look for Clarissa Burt and I will, I will be there. Okay. Very good. All right. I hate this part, but uh, that concludes the episode. If you would <laughs> just kind of hang tight and I'm going to close us out here. Okay. <laughs> Pretty people for that skin.